beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, law of attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. I'm an intuitive reader, a manifesting coach, a Reiki practitioner, and a life path guide and mentor here to help you along your awakening journey so that you can co-create the life of your dreams. And this week I am doing all money themed videos. So I just created a video about how you might be repelling money because of your relationship with your mother and the umbilical cord and there's so much juicy goodness in there so i will link it here if you want to go watch that after this and in this video we are going to get messages from money using my money deck and i'm also going to teach you about a little bit about money and the energy that it holds and the current state of our world and why you might be repelling it more you know that other video was about that as well but this is a different reason why okay so Let's get two messages first, and then I'll go into the reason why you might be repelling it. So I already opened up sacred space. I just had three messages pop out. Use me to create joy. I arrive faster when you love yourself. And please don't stop looking at me. So when I channel these messages for money, money is saying, don't stop looking at your bank account. Don't stop looking at the beauty of everything that you already have. Go around your house and add up every single item and how much it costs. Or if somebody gifted to you, try to imagine like, all right, that was probably like $200 or that maybe that couch was $2,000, you know, go around and add up everything that you have right now and feel abundant in that feel like you have enough. And that's essentially loving yourself. Um, I'm sorry, the wrong one. I write faster when you love yourself. So you're, when you appreciate what you have and you're not beating yourself up for not having more, there's so many different concepts and reasons why money might not be continually flowing to you in large amounts. So forgive yourself. We have to understand how to create money right? We're in this new world. We're living in the 4D energy, which is your heart chakra. We're understanding that money is like water. It flows to us and through us. So we can't grip onto it. We can't resist it. We can't have fear of water. Um, and when we love ourselves, we're saying, I'm worthy. I am allowed to have this flow. I am allowed to want more because I am somebody who's going to do good with it. And um, to go into why you might be repelling it, these three messages were perfect because money holds an energy, right? There's low vibrations in our world. There's things that happen with money. There's exchanges for weapons, for horrific acts, for all of these toxic and dark things. Money is passing through people's hands for the purpose of this toxic, dark thing. And, you know, six months later, you might be touching that same $5 bill. And now that, that $5 bill holds the energy. And I'm not trying to scare you. Don't get scared about money. Okay. Don't fear the energy now coming into your house, into your home, into your org field, but see yourself as a sage, see yourself as it is now your mission to attract all the dark money so that you can be the one to cleanse it. This is why we need all light workers doing their mission, charging what they should be charging for their gifts. You know, a lot of people who have resistance around money and they have unhealed mother wound issues, they're going to judge how you charge for your services. They're going to say, you know, oh my gosh, she charges so much for a reading or he charges so much for a coaching session, which that's just their own money projections onto you you know that the more money you receive and the more you value yourself, the more you use money to create joy, to put out good messages on YouTube, to write that book, the more you use that money to fuel your mission, you are now putting out positive, positively charged money. Okay, so you may have received that money when it was dirty, but now you're transmuting it because you're saying, I am worthy of charging this much for a session, this much for my business, whatever it is. You're then getting the dirty money, <laughs> if you want to call it that. You're using it for good. You're transmuting it. You're blessing it when it arrives. I bless every dollar when it comes to my hands. 
even if I'm at a Starbucks or if I'm exchanging money with a client, as soon as they leave, I'm putting my hands over it and blessing it, cleansing it and saying any lower vibration that has been on this money is now released. This money is now protected with a golden white light bubble. And may I pass this on to somebody else so that they can feel that higher vibration. And you now become this conduit for money to change our world. The more money you get, the more opportunity you have to transmute the dark energy into light. Okay. And we unconsciously as light workers, we know this about money. We know that it's dark. So a lot of times we repel it. We're like, oh my God, I don't want it but we don't even, we're not conscious of it. So being aware and watching this video and being like, okay, I'm not going to repel it anymore. I'm not going to be scared to receive the darkness. And that is really our entire mission here. Money just is representing it. Our mission is to transmute darkness. And there's all these different ways we can do it. We can do it through a Reiki practice. You are bringing in a client, you're, you're channeling the Reiki energy to push out any darkness that is in that person's body. And you can use it through money, like we talked about blessing money and then sending money back out. And now that ripple effect of good light that's around that dollar bill or that $5 bill or $100 bill, that light is now going to touch all these different people that are going to touch that bill. So when we do it with intention, and when we tell money, it is safe to come to me, I am open to receiving. And when we heal our mother wound, which is the most important piece, because that's on an energetic level, whether your body is physically going to allow the money to come to you or not, definitely go watch that video because that is the number one reason why people repel money because their energy body is literally not feeling safe. So we have that. And then we have this, we have this unconscious awareness that money's dirty and we don't want to touch it. So we have to suit up, we have to strengthen our cords, we have to strengthen our boundaries and say, I welcome the darkness because I'm going to alchemize it, I'm going to transmute it, I'm going to turn it into something that is so beautiful that our world needs. And you are worthy of receiving this, you're worthy of receiving money. So let's get more messages. I actually have two decks here. I have my Angels of Abundance deck, so we're going to use this one too. So the first three messages was don't stop looking at your money. You know, don't, don't repel it because you think it's dirty unconsciously. Um, believe me, we do things so unconsciously and you know, when you do things on a spiritual level, you're like one time I, I put my Jeep top on my Jeep at a random time. It was like in the middle of the afternoon, it was going to be sunny the rest of the day, but I just felt drawn to put the Jeep top on. I get a shower afterwards. I come out of the shower and there's like a torrential rainstorm that was not on the radar. And I was like, oh my gosh, I unconsciously put my Jeep top on. Like, how cool is that? Our angels and guides, this deck, your angels of abundance, they are guiding you. And you might not be looking at money because you're unconsciously knowing that the money's dirty. So we really need to strengthen our boundaries and take on this mission of changing the world by transmuting this dark energy and let's put all money out there that is good. And the reason why we need more light workers is because the more the light workers there are, the more we can overpower the dark workers. The dark workers are all of these businesses that are just out to make money for and doing it for all the wrong reasons. And it's all greed. And even like the TikTok community of just um, maybe they're putting out negativity and maybe they're exposing their bodies and they're getting all this money for it, like porn sites and stuff. Like we need more light workers doing their mission to overpower that. And it's a shame because light workers don't think that they can make money using their gifts because they have that belief system that there's no place in the world for them. And we have to strengthen your boundaries and your cords and say, I am worthy. I'm going to step into my solar plexus energy and say, I'm allowed to take up space in this world. I'm allowed to take up space on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube. I am allowed to be seen because I need to help our planet change. I am one piece of the puzzle that's going to make the puzzle so big and massive that it's going to overpower that darkness. And the more we can float money around between all of us, it's like a tornado effect. We are then just going to come in and swoop around that darkness and spit it out. And it's all just going to be a beautiful rainbow after the storm. But we have to get on our mission and do it. And we have to know that we're worthy of it. Okay, this one just flew. Oh, we have two. 
We have face your financial fears and conscious consumer. Okay, face your financial fears. Oh, there's two little kids with an angel. When you are honest with yourself about your fears of success or failure, they can no longer control you. Be free of hidden fears by exposing them to the light of awareness. And you'll release that you, in fact, have nothing to fear. And that every successful person has struggled with and released self-doubts. And for me, when I see this, I just think about, you know, we are scared to put our gifts out there because we're like, what if nobody buys it? What if nobody signs up? What if we're talking to nobody on YouTube and we have 20 views for, you know, however long? When I first started YouTube, I literally, if you go back to one of my first videos, I think it still only has like 20 views. I did that for months. I did that for months until, you know, it went to 40 views. And then I still only had like 40 subscribers. And then in March, I think I started in January. And then in March, I like jumped up to 800 subscribers pretty quickly and started to get all these views. So I was consistent because it's what I love to do. So I didn't care about the views. I had, I, I had fear, but I didn't have fear. A little me was just like, a little part of me was just like, I'm just going to post it anyway. I don't care if I'm helping 10 people that feels good for me because it's actually fueling my soul to post these readings. And if 10 people are getting it, then that's 10 more people than if I didn't post it. So at least I'm affecting somebody. So when you are facing a fear of being successful at sharing your gifts, or maybe you fear failing and looking stupid and being cringeworthy, you got to push through that and just say, there's somebody out there waiting for you. You don't even know how many people are waiting for your message until you put yourself out there. Like I found all of you guys and you guys found me, but if I didn't, if I didn't consistently stay doing YouTube, even through the times where I was waking up on a Wednesday morning and being like, what's the point? It's been two months. There's only 20 views. This isn't going anywhere. This is confirmation that the universe doesn't want me to do this. And I followed my joy. It brought me, I was excited to wake up the next morning. I was doing the morning messages. I would post it by 10 a.m. every day. And that's how my 10 a.m. posts, that's the time I post all of my videos um, where I live. And it started because of that. And I've kept the 10 a.m. theme because it reminds me, it's like nostalgia. It's like, man, Michelle, you did it. Like you just kept doing it when there was no feedback, there was no great job, there was no money. I just did it because it made me feel good. And I loved channeling the messages and seeing what cards would pop up. And I know how much reading saved my life back then. So you have to chase your dreams and push away the fears and not worry if who's watching or how many likes you get. You just do it because it makes your heart feel good. And you know that if you're helping one person, then that's enough. It's one more person than it was yesterday. So face those fears. And then we have conscious consumer. You have the power to heal and help the world with your decision to buy only products and services that are ethical and environmentally friendly. How perfect is this? Your services are the ethical and environmentally friendly services. <laughs> yes, this is talking about like foods and products and, you know, going green, but I see this as spirit confirming everything I just taught you guys. Everything I just said was about you honoring your gifts and feeling worthy to step through the fears just to share them. And it's your job to attract, this is an abundance deck. It's your job to attract abundance to you so that you can use it to fuel your gifts, your environmentally friendly gifts, and then you put it back out into the world. Let's see what else it says. As a conscious consumer, you choose to invest in fair trade and organic goods. You live simply and you purchase only that which you need. So this is also like being mindful to not over extend yourself or splurge on certain things, treat yourself, love yourself, but also have some boundaries, like tighten up the ship a little bit. You know, when you're doing a workout and you're like, all right, I could do maybe five more reps. Um, and then you kind of cop out and only do two. No, hold yourself accountable, do those extra reps. And when you're shopping, you know, hold yourself accountable and don't buy that extra thing if you really don't need it. If it's not going to expand you and make you a better person, if it's just going to feed an addiction or a habit, then don't buy it. Maybe say, all right, on Wednesday, I'll buy this. That way it gives you something to look forward to. Not that we need reward systems. I don't believe in that. 
I believe in freedom and that we don't need to say I'm worthy of receiving this if I do that. I don't believe in that because we're always worthy of receiving at all times. But um, it is good to like kind of tighten things up because you have boundaries then. You're respecting money and you're not just throwing it away. Okay, let's do two final messages for money. This has been so good. And my belly is growling. I am hungry. You get more when you are happy. So this card is saying, money saying, raise your vibration. Do you even know like, what are the things that make you happy? For me, it's taking a bath, going for a walk. Um, last night, my niece texted me and she was like, hey, can we hang out? And I was like, yes. Um, so we went in my Jeep and we went and got Salad Works. And then we got boba tea, those yummy drinks. And she, it was her idea. She's like, can we just drive around and look at Christmas lights? And I'm like, I literally wanted to cry the whole drive because I felt so much love being shared between her and I, and she's 12. <laughs> and there's just an energetic exchange between her and I, where we just have fun. And I'm like, you know what? She's going to remember this when she's my age, when she's 40, she's going to remember calling up me and her aunt and me always saying yes and putting her first and, you know, giving her the space to dance and feel free to be herself in my Jeep and, and buying yummy food and, there's just so much to be said for that. And when you're in your joy, when you're in your happiness, which is what we were in yesterday, that's when you create more money. So money is telling you that when you are happy, more of it will come to you. And um, being with my niece is always a vibration lift. So who, how can you figure out what, like what things in your life bring you the most joy? and write it down and go to it often, especially when you feel like money is kind of in that drought phase, you need to go have fun. You need to get off the journey for a bit and go and laugh and sing and dance. Her and I walked around Target. We ended up doing a good deed and we got her older sister a Christmas gift and we had so much fun. And then we left Target and then she's like, can we drive more? And I was like, yes. And we went and got gas in my Jeep so that we could drive even longer. And she was my little DJ and we were singing and dancing. And it was just like, I was observing it and wanting to cry and my vibration was just so elevated. And I'm like, I need to do this more often. I do it often, you know, I do it a lot, but I need to find more things that make me feel this way. And it's her energy, you know, it's our exchange of love that heightens it. So go to the people that you love so deeply and free yourself with them. Be free, sing, dance, play, create experiences that raise your vibration. You are so worthy of receiving. So you get more of me when you are happy. Final message. Let's see what comes through. That one jumped out. When you say yes to odd offers, that's me coming to you. <laughs> so even though my niece was not an odd offer, but it was kind of out of the blue. I haven't like had a, a special date with her in like, in like maybe three weeks or four weeks. So she jumped into my phone and said, hey, can we hang out? It was an odd offer. Somebody was asking me to go somewhere. The universe is doing this. It's trying to pull you out of your normal routine to create space to raise your vibe. And that's what this card is saying is when there's an odd offer coming in, it might be leading you to a desire. It might be leading you to something that's going to connect you with somebody else for a job offer or for more money. So follow the breadcrumbs, follow the lead. All right, lovies, I feel complete. Do you feel complete? I hope you do. If you have any questions about money or if you would like to purchase my money deck, um, any questions, drop in the comments. If you want me to create more videos about money, tell me what you want me to talk about or if you have any questions, I can answer them. And I would actually love to do like a Q&A about money. If you guys wanna drop a bunch of questions about it and I can spend a whole video answering your questions, that would be really cool. But remember, you are in charge of letting yourself know that it's safe to receive. Even though the money might be, we might be unconsciously thinking that it's dirty, it's now our job to receive more so we can overpower the world with all light workers and we can pull in as much money as we can to then put it back out and beam everybody with light with it. That's how I like to see it, is you're, you're throwing the money the waves of water, it's crystal blue over the mucky brown water. Okay, and when you have dreams about water, that's usually a sign that money is coming. So write that down. All right, lovies, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. All right, peace out.